so here we are with Chris Austin and Julie. We ran into Chris out here at the Ruth Mine. He's a previous owner of the mine, he and his brother and his family before that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you can just in general about the mine? Sure, uh, Doug Graham was the original prospector in 1899. He brought my grandfather in, in around 1917. And the way I understand it, he traded quarter ownership if my grandfather would pay the taxes on the mine. And uh, built up, uh, they had their own schoolhouse here, 68 miners, uh, a little general store. And when World War II broke out, they sent all the miners to strategic metal mines. Right, that was, the, it, that was the 1942, I think. The, yes, sir. The, all the gold mines closed on. This was a gold mine, right? Yes, this was gold. And all the, all the non-strategic metal mines were shut down. Right. So this so, got shut so down. So we cleared out very quickly. And it was not totally abandoned, but uh, it sat for many years. And I grew up down in Orange County, about three and a half hours away. And we started coming up here when I was a little kid. And my dad fixed the old warehouse here. To a two bedroom uh, cabin. So this is the warehouse. This was the warehouse. We're looking at the back of it kind of, right? Right. So one big central room and two offices and a bathroom with a shower. Okay. So he fixed it up into a really nice cabin. We spent years from 1972 up until I was in past college. Uh -huh. And uh, we lost ownership in 2003 when my father passed away. So not that long ago. Right. How much yeah. land did you actually have with this? It was about 200 acres. Oh, the so it's a nice... area here is about 60. And they brought the water down from about a mile up the okay. canyon here. Okay. So they had mining claims lined up to oh. get to the spring. He had that property as well. I see. And they had a two-inch water line. It came to a tank that was up here on the on the ridge line. Huh? And they were just gravity feed down here. Nice. So yeah, in the seventies we had hot and cold running water and wow. all the everything you'd ever That's want. a great story. Okay, so here we are. We've moved over to the bunkhouse, right? Right. It's a four-bedroom bunkhouse with a central area. And we used it as kind of a storage area and uh, kind of a warehouse type thing in the 70s and 80s. I see. Let's go in and take a quick look. My brother Steve got involved with the Adopt a Cabin program. So this is still in pretty good shape. Yeah. It is. So you say four. It was well protected. You say four bedroom? Or did you say something? Yeah, like? four bedroom in that central area. I see right here, yeah. Neat. Okay, while we're up here, why don't we why don't you just say, like point this out? So now you got this building here. Right. Is that uh, a few of these I don't know much history on. Okay. I assume that was just somebody's house. Just a little a little one of the miners one of the locals' houses. Right. Like I say, there were about 68 miners here at right. the peak. The same with the one down below it uh, on the left. Behind the trees there? Correct. Yeah, it looks uh -huh. like and then where the two buildings on the right are put together, those were originally separate buildings. One of them was the schoolhouse. Okay. This... And at one point they had 22 kids in the school. That's what I heard. And I heard that that went until the 50s. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Somebody said it was 1951 was the last year that the schoolhouse was operating. Really? And that there was a, the teacher's quarters. They had a little apartment for the teacher to live in. Right. Off, is that right. what? Is I that, heard that. Is yes. that what one of the buildings is? Yep. Okay. And then over here we have the... Let's go look at the bigger one over here. Was this the most recent place where someone lived? Yes. The, we... Uh, we used it until essentially when my father passed away yeah. and uh, we had one caretaker living in there for a little while. Did you guys ever do any mining since your father? Or did your no. father mine or was this your grandfather? No. Uh, my, well, my father was involved with all of it, but he, nobody ever did any labor. But was was he was he running the mine essentially then you mean? Yes, from a distance. Uh huh. Um, my father was born in 1914. Okay. So, can we go inside of this one? Yeah, if it's, if it's unlocked. Go ahead, Julie. I'll follow you guys up. I like the door oh, it, I'm surprised it's not been beaten up more than it has because sometimes the kids get into these places. Right. And, and my God, here. it's just yeah. unbelievable. 
It is sad to see it this year, though. It was so nice. Was it really? So how long has it been since someone lived here? Uh, it was right after the BLM took it. So around 2003. I see. And you had you kind of arranged to have that caretaker live here until then? My brother Steve arranged it. Uh -huh. yes. Yep. But uh, my dad moved some walls around in here. This this was porch. Oh. From here. On oh yeah, down. I can he see up. I can the, see up here. Uh, yeah. yeah. And had the bathroom with the shower. Nice. What the heck does yeah, that mean? I have no idea. Scary. And every time we came up here, every weekend, he would bring another. The kitchen cabinet or uh -huh. stove or whatever. This was pretty much an all-purpose room. We had a couch in here and uh, we had a fireplace over in the corner and a dining room table over here. Somewhere I read that there was also a bar here. Uh, yes, and I don't know which building that was. Well, I saw a video of it and it looked like it had a cooler and it had a, it had a, unless I was looking at here, there was a stool. There was a, there was a, yeah, we had stools there. <laughs> so behind Chris is where the mill used to stand. What can you tell me about the mill? It was about a five story building uh, built up the side of the hill there. And then we had numerous settling tanks and I don't remember how many, at least 20. Really? Uh, for the cyanide solution. Yeah, they used to fill the tanks up after they crushed it and then they would leach out the gold. The, right. the cyanide would actually dissolve the gold. Right. And it would leach and it out. And then they would run it over a zinc tablets and the gold would stick to the zinc. Right. And then you're left with a mess of tailings. Right. And that's, uh, there's a huge tailings pile down here covered up by the dirt. They've covered that. And huh? the BLM brought in a some sort of big caterpillar and pushed right. a big portion of the mountain down on top of so it. So did they haul the mill parts off? I don't know. Oh. I don't think so. I think it's still underneath. Oh, it is. So they just buried it, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mills are usually built on a on a tier. They usually right. They, they use gravity to help. Yeah. You also said your brother got to go down into the lower levels of the mine. Right, and that's somewhere out on the internet. Uh, my brother Steve and his son Stuart got to go with some spelunkers. Okay. And they went through, and they were amazed at the size of the caverns uh, on the different levels right. throughout the mine. I think it's about five or six hundred feet deep. Yeah, we always heard it was five hundred feet deep, and then every hundred feet there was another a working level. level. Yeah, a drift level. Right. right. And then they 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 take everything from each level and they haul it up a central shaft. Right. Bring it out here to the mill. And they had the train track system with the ore cars. Came right over to the mill, huh? Yep. Did you were you around? Did you ever see the, any of the ore cars running? No, we uh, we actually got our hands on one when I was a kid. Did you? <laughs> But uh, when the mine was operating, they had a they'd captured a burrow named her Ginny, oh, and my. put a uh, carbide lamp on her, and she hauled the cars. Oh my that. God, that would be so cool to have a picture of that. <laughs> Yo, no kidding. Do you yeah, have any old it. pictures of this? Uh, we have quite a few in the family. Do you? Yeah, obviously I'm here from Texas, so I don't have any of that with right. me. Right. Uh, cool. Okay, so we're coming down the hill to the school. Looks like a, a two building affair. So this was, there were 20 some students? 22 students from what I've been told. Yeah, and, and the buildings weren't put together until, uh, I, I think it was just shortly before we lost the mine in 03. Okay. One of the caretakers. Oh, the dusts are still here, huh? Those were put in by the uh, adopted cabinet. Oh, they were just to make it look good? Yeah. The teacher lived here somewhere, too? That's what I read, anyway. That the teacher. Yes. I know the teacher was on a property. Where? I don't know if well, they, they actually in the building. Yeah, they, what I heard is that it was, a, it was adjoined to this building. Probably it right there. 
Do you think this would be her little apartment or his little apartment? Probably. Yeah, the ceiling looks almost brand new. Yeah, that must have been a doctor cabin. Yeah. A little bathroom. Hey, in the, you know what? The uh, I think one of the caretakers was living in here for a while. That's probably they? it. Did. Okay. So, so was this like this when you were younger, or did you see it? You saw it before it looked like this. Yeah, it was real. It was very rough before. Uh, was this blackboard here? No. Uh -huh. Or green board? Was that fire, the, fireplace? The, was probably not like that. Right. And the paneling. Yeah, there. paneling's pretty modern. Right. And these chairs weren't here. I don't. I don't this is fake. This is fake. Yeah. That's just. That's like paneling. Right. That's what my dad would put in up in the warehouse. Your dad put that up. Yeah. Okay. Now here we had a wood stove. It looks like. There's a chimney anyway. Was your dad's friend? Yes. Look at that. That's an So your museum and associated buildings are maintained by the friends of Ruth Mine as a tribute to the Mr. Fred Austin Sr. and Dr. Evans families who've owned the Ruth Mine since July of 1925. 25, huh? So your, your father and grandfather are both Fred? Yes, as well as my brother. As well as one of your brothers. Right. I moved down to Texas in 99. Uh, so I wasn't around here for the last few years of, of our ownership of it. Do you think this building was moved this close, yeah. or was it built this close? No, it was moved here. I see. They were joined. I remember that being my dad's idea from years ago, but I don't remember when they actually did it. I see. Well, that's cool. Uh, this is still not bad, No, it's not bad. Where? Well, they're using it for signs there. Oh. Oh, did they? And uh, I was always bummed that I didn't didn't end up with that. Who 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 made that? Oh, the miners. They made a workbench. The mm -hmm. uh, took the Hercules dynamite. Right, the wood crate, ones. Right, mm -hmm. and used the slats off that to make a workbench. Oh, cool. And, uh, oh, I was, that was if cool. I had known what the BLM was going to do in covering up the mill, I would have been been here in a heartbeat, perhaps. So what do you think? Oh, it was in the mill. Yeah. So they just they just buried that. Right. That's sad. Yep. We believe this was the old bar. I'm not 100% sure though. Yeah, that looks like it. Well, there's a refrigerator and a cooler. That's back through the door we came in. There's a back deck out of an automobile or something with some speakers in it. Here's a barrel stove, it looks like. Bathroom over there. Refrigerator. Hot point. And here's an old cooler. In Hudson, Wisconsin. What was it? Yeah, Nord Lake. Yakers. Mouse nest. So here's a sink. Little counter. There's another older cooler out here. So maybe this was the bar area, huh? Bar and store. Yeah, general store. Mm -hmm. Was this the general store? I think so. He oh. says both. Oh, I see. Chris. Well, Chris, it's been so nice talking to you, and you gave us a lot of great information. Same here. It's great to meet you guys. Likewise, and you can Good come. Good time running into you. Good, and uh, come and look us up on our YouTube channel, and you'll be able to see yourself and the old school and the I'm rest sure of I the. Sure, I want to see that, but, <laughs> but I will take a look. But uh, we do appreciate. It. Uh, thank you again for for for, uh, for telling us about everything, and Julie and I, we both appreciate it very much. So. Thanks for doing what you guys do. All right, you're welcome. Well, that concludes our tour. Thanks for watching the video, you guys. We hope you enjoy it. Yes, we do.